Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos. This is the squash blossom block. It finishes at 12 inches. It's a two color block so it has an accent fabric and a background fabric. There are other variations of this squash blossom and the big difference is I colored this flying geese unit around the sides differently. They us usually have the light and dark reversed, but I like this better so I made it like this. Here is a quilt and I thought it looked better with the blocks offset. So if you offset the blocks, you'll just fill in these little um, 6 by 12 inch finished plain blocks at the top and the bottom. Down here I have, uh, this is the 60 by 84 quilt and it's 32 blocks. Here are the fabric requirements you need. The accent fabric, it says 32 fat quarters and I allowed one fat quarter per color, but I think you can easily get three blocks out of one fat quarter. So you can cut this into a third. You probably only need 11 fat quarters. Then you would just be repeating one fabric three times in the quilt. And then the background fabric, three and three quarter yards. This is the extra cutting instructions for those little plain half blocks that go at the top and the bottom of these alternating columns. So here are the patches. Patch A is a two inch by four inch finished rectangle. We cut four and a half inch by two and a half inch rectangles. We need four patches of each of the fabrics. And here are the AccuQuilt dies that will cut this. Patch B is a quarter square triangle, four inch finished. These are used for two places. They are used for the flying geese units on, on the sides and then this quarter square triangle in the center. If we're using patches, we cut five and a quarter inch squares, cut them in half twice diagonally, and you'll get four patches. You'll need six patches of the background and two patches of the accent fabric. And here for the background fabric, I put two patches plus one square. The background fabric is used in the quarter square triangle. This is where you'll need the two patches, and the one square is what you need for the flying geese four at a time. And here is what you do if you're using flying geese four at a time method. You cut this square, but you do not subcut it. And I'll go over all this too. Here are the AccuQuilt dies that will cut this shape. Patch C is a two inch finished square. We cut two and a half inch squares. We need four patches of the background fabric and the AccuQuilt dies are listed here. Patch D is a two inch finished half square triangle. We cut two and seven eighth inch squares, cut them in half once diagonally for two patches. We'll need four patches for the background fabric and 12 patches for the accent fabric. For the flying geese four at a time, for this fabric you'll need four squares plus four patches. And here are the AccuQuilt dies that will cut these shapes. Here are my patches cut and I'll go over them. This is patch A, the rectangles. Here are the B patches and what we're going to use with these, we needed two patches of the accent fabric and one square plus two patches of the background fabric. The patches will be used to make the quarter square triangle in the center. We'll piece these together to make the, the center unit. This full square will be used for the flying geese four at a time. And we'll also use these patch D squares. And then patch C are our two inch finished squares and then our two inch finished half square triangles. With these squares, we're going to make half square triangles two at a time for a total of four half square triangles. For step one, we're going to make the four half square triangles. If you want to make your half square triangles two at a time, stay tuned for a short tutorial that shows you how. On the back side of the light fabric, we're going to draw a diagonal line, put the fabrics together, right sides together, and we're going to stitch on either side of the diagonal line. Here is the diagonal line drawn and then the stitching on both sides. 
Now we cut this in half along the diagonal line. Then we have our two half square triangles. Press the seams open and cut off the nubs. The four half square triangles are made. For step two, we're going to take the half square triangles we just made, the A patches and the C patches, and we're going to piece two different corner units. One facing this way and one facing that way. And we'll make two of each. So we just follow the diagram and we'll put these out like this. Then the C goes like this. And then the A background goes like this. So we'll sew these two together, press the seams, and then sew the rectangles to the top. And you'll have four total of these corner units. For step three, we're going to make the flying geese four at a time. Or if you have cut patches, you can use patches to make your flying geese. We'll take the large B patch and the four D patches. If you're not familiar with making flying geese four at a time, stay tuned for a short tutorial that will show you how. For flying geese four at a time, you need one large square and four small squares. The large square is the geese part of the flying geese and the small squares are the sky part of the flying geese. On the back of each of the small squares, draw a diagonal line. Place two of the small squares like this on the large square, right sides together. You line up these edges and make sure these lines line up. Then you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch on both sides of that drawn line. Here are the two stitching lines on either side of the marked line and now we cut it in half on the marked line. Now you'll open these up and press your seams open on both sides. Cut off the nubs. Now you'll place another square in this corner. Here's your diagonal line and stitch on either side of the diagonal line. Do that for both of these. When you're stitching, your stitches should come out or start right at this point, this intersection here, this 90 degree angle. Cut this in half on the diagonal line and you have these two. Press your seams open and cut off your nubs. And do the same for this one. Four flying geese. For step four, we're going to take the flying geese units we just made and the accent A patch and sew them together like this. And this will make up the side unit right here. Here are the flying geese and we'll just sew this a patch at the bottom like that. Press the seams open and make four of these. For step five we're going to make the quarter square triangle unit. So we only have these patches left. And we lay them out like the diagram says. Now for these we sew them in half first. We'll take this piece and flip it over this way. Match all three sides Stitch your quarter inch or your scant quarter inch, press the seams open. Do the same thing over here. Match all three sides, stitch this seam, press them open. Then when they come back, all pressed open, and you're going to flip this over and sew the long seam and press that seam open. All of our individual units are done. We should have nine of them. Now we just look at the diagram on the paper and put the unit together. And there's our squash blossom. I had a really good question from a viewer a few days ago, a new quilter. She wanted to know if I could give the size of each individual finished unit. And I thought that was a great question because especially if you're new, you want to be measuring each unit to make sure that they're the right size. But I'm gonna do something a little bit better than that. Let's talk about grids. We talked about grids early on, but 
a lot of you are new to my channel. So if I spread these out, and if you picture a grid, if I draw a line, imaginary line here and here and here and here, just make a, a grid out of it, you'll see that it's three across and three down. So it's a three by three grid. So if this is a 12 inch finished block, and you take 12 and divide it by three, because you have a grid of three, which is four. So each of these individual units should measure four inch finished, which at this point, they should all measure four and a half inches. So when you're doing that, when you're looking at a block, try to break it down into its grid. Most of the time it'll be a three by three, a four by four, five by five, six by six, something like that. And then if you know the size of the block, you can determine which size each of these grids are. So I hope that clears up a few things for you. Now we're going to sew the top units into a row, the middle units and the bottom units. Then we'll press the seams and sew the rows together. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos.